Hello everyone and welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today we'll be dealing with the VIT Triple E examination and we'll be dealing with the mental ability segment of it. Let's begin then with the first question. If it was Saturday on 17th December 2002, what was the day on 22nd December 2004? A. Saturday, B. Sunday, C. Monday, or D. Wednesday? Now, let's see the initial date which is 17th December 2002. We know that a year can have either 365 days or 366 days. So, from 17th December 2002 till 16th December 2003, there will be 365 days. Since, both two th since 2003 is not a leap year, it will be 365 days. However, from 17th December 2003 to 16th December 2004, there will be 366 days. The reason being, uh, 2004 is a leap year and will have an extra day on February. Now, we need the day of 22nd December 2004. So, 16th, so from 17th to 22nd, we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 days. So, in total, we'll add them all up. 6 plus 6 plus 5, 17, 13, and 17. So there was a total of 737 days. And so, to find the day of 22nd December, we need to find the remainder of dividing this, the number of days, with 7. And if it is 1, then it's a Saturday. If it was 2, then it would be a Sunday, and so on. Now, if we divide this, we have 1, 0, 5, and then we will get remainder 2. And since we get remainder 2, this means that the 22nd December 2004 was a Sunday. Option B. Next question. The diagram given below shows the number of students who got distinction in three subjects out of 500 students. Study the diagram carefully and answer the question that follows. What is the percentage of students who got distinction in two subjects? 8%, 9%, 10%, and 12%. So, the question is asking, what is the percentage of students who got distinction in two subjects? Now, we will assume that they are asking that they got distinction in exactly two subjects. So, if we look at the Venn diagram, we, ha we have this area, this area, and this area, which represents two subjects. This, this area would represent three subjects, and which is, not their, which is not what they are asking. They are asking for exactly two subjects, whereas 17, 42, and 50 are for chemistry, physics, and mathematics only each. So, the total number of students who got distinction in two subjects would be 12 plus 15 plus 13, which will be equal to 40 students. Now, they are not asking about the students. They are asking about the percentage of students. So, we have to take the number of students divided by the total number of students into 100 percentage. So, 0, 0 cut, 40 divided by 5, we get 8 percentage. So option A, 8% is the correct answer for this question. Next question. The ages of Manav, Veer, Shankar and Chandra are 32, 21, 35 and 29 years. Not in order. Whenever asked, they lie of their own age but tell the truth about others. Shankar says, my age is 32 and Manav's age is not 35. Veer says, my age is not 29 and Shankar's age is not 21. Manav says, my age is 32. What is Chandra's age? Now for this, we will prepare a table with each of the peoples. So Manav's, Veer, Manav, 
Veer Shankar and Chandra and the ages on the top 3529 so first statement Shankar says my age is 32 However, the question says that whenever asked, they lie of their own age. So th from this we can conclude that Shankar's age is not 32. So Shankar, 32, will put a cross. And then he says, Manav's age is not 35. Now, this is a true statement since the question says that they tell the truth about others. So Manav's age is not 35. Here, a cross. Veer says, my age is not 29, which means actually his age is 29, since they lie about their own age. So, Veer's age is 29. So, others cannot be 29. And he says that Shankar's age is not 21. This is a true statement. So, for Shankar, 21 will put a cross. From this, we get that Shankar can't be 32, 21 or 29 which means Shankar must be 35 and the others can't be 35. The next statement, Manav says, my age is 32. So this means that Manav's age is actually not 32. So we can cross Manav and 32 and from that we get Manav's age as uh, 21 and since the remaining one is Chandra, his age would be 32. And from this, they are asking, what is Chandra's age? Which we found out is 32, which is option A. Next question. If P means division, T means addition, M means subtraction, and D means multiplication, then what will be the value of the expression? 12 M 12 D 28 P 7 T 15. So, Let's rewrite this based on the information they gave. So 12, here we have m. m, they says, means subtraction. So we put subtraction, 12. And then d, they says, means multiplication. So we'll put that symbol. And then we have 28. And after 28, we have p, which they say means division. So 28 divided by 7. And then after 7, we have T, which means addition. So we put the plus symbol and then 15. Now, based on the board mass rule of operations, first, we, ha we have to do bracket off, which is not there. Then we do division. So 28 divided by 7. So 12 minus 12 into 28 divided by 7 will be 4 plus 15. Then after division, we have to do multiplication. So 12 into 4, which will be 48. So 12 minus 48 plus 15. Now, let's add the terms. Uh, 12 and 15, we get 27 minus 48. Now, if we do this, we will get negative 21 as the answer. So, option D, negative 21, is the correct answer for this question. Last question. Neelam, who is Rohit's daughter, says to Indu, your mother, Rita, is the younger sister of my father, who is the third child of Sonaji. How is Sonaji related to Indu? Maternal uncle, father, grandfather or father-in-law? So, let's draw the relations which is said in the question. We have Neelam, who is Rohit's daughter. So, let's represent Neelam by N and Rohit by R-O. So, we get that Neelam who is female and Rohit who is male, that Rohit is the father of Neelam. Then Neelam says to Indu, so let's assume an Indu in anywhere over here. They say your mother Rita, so Indu's mother Rita, which will be female is the younger sister of my father. So if they are younger sister, this means that both of them are siblings, Rohit and Rita. And then we say that 
uh, youngest of my father, who is the third child of Sonaji, which means that Neelam's father is the third child of Sonaji. So from this we can conclude that Sonaji is the father of both Rohit and Rita. The order of children is not necessary, as we will see in the question. They are asking, how is Sonaji related to Indu? Now, we can clearly see that Sonaji is the father of Rita and Rita is the mother of Indu. From this, we can see, we can say that Sonaji is the grandfather of Indu. With this, we correct option C, grandfather. And that is the end of this episode. We hope you found it interesting. For more of such preparatory videos, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel Brain Blitz Audios. Until the next episode, take care, stay safe, ta-ta for now.